गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू दिस फोर्टी फोर्थ एडिशन ऑफ थर्सडे म्यूजिंग फ्रॉम वन लॉकडाउन टू अदर लॉकडाउन वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग नेक्स्ट लाइट प्लीज Uh, I'd like to welcome Professor Dr. Tofan Pati Sir. He's from Qatar. He's the National Advisory Board member of IAPP, Chairman of Membership Subcommittee of IPS, Life Fellow, IOPM, UK Organized Ancestors, Private Secretary, and Industry Secretary. Many conferences to his credit. And since he does not like uh, too much of his introductions, sir, I'm directly handing over to you. Thank you, Alim. uh we, we have got two good moderators who are instrumental with me in organizing this series of first musings dr amrit patadosi he is from bhubneswar we are together in high tech medical college he is a neuropsychiatrist psychotherapist and he is also consultant to amri hospitals and healing touch clinic he is at present direct council member of ips He is editor of Odisha Journal, Journal of Psychiatry, which is indexed, and we have with us from Lucknow, Dr. Alim Siddiqui, who is the director of Healthy Mind Neuropsychiatry and Behavioral Sciences Centre, Lucknow. He is a visiting professor of psychiatry at Ras Lucknow Medical College and Hospital, and GSB Medical College, Kanpur. He is past director council member of IPS. He is the guest faculty in Amit University, and he is finance secretary of IMA Lucknow branch. and also of iapp up and up up and up chapter welcome alim it is now my privilege to introduce our two eminent chair persons dr dinesh narayan who is from cochin he is a alumnus of calicut medical college and uh, bj medical college ahmedabad and government medical college baroda and he is now the professor and head of the department of psychiatry amrita institute in kochi he is visiting professor of department of bioethics at sarm university chennai he is unit head of kerala state international bioethics network he is national chairperson standing committee on mental health and addiction wing of indian medical association he is fellow member of international institute of organizational psychological medicine at the us he is past president of indian association of private psychiatry he is treasurer and president of iapp past president of ips kerala state branch and past president of ia bp the general secretary of justice krishnair foundation of india charitable society welcome dr dinesh narayan dr alok vajpayee with is with us he is a psych yes he is a psychiatrist trained at nimans bangalore presently working at kanpur after few stints abroad Apart from practicing psychiatry, he is a consistent focus of his work is on children, adolescents, and youth, being associated with various institutions, schools. His work extends beyond the confines of clinic into freelance teaching of mental health issues and life skills. Psychiatry, physics, film, music, literature, and teaching are only some of the things that occupy the travel along with his wide world and what not. The dynamic person. He has been instrumental in putting together many awareness campaigns and workshops. He is also a regular columnist who writes about issues of mental health and socio-politics of life. One special person with our Dr. Alok Basbey is the transformational process of mind to enhance inner harmony and peace. As Mahatma Gandhi remains his left limb to uh, his example. is the curator of an interactive program on our with mahatma focusing on the transformative skills of mahatma gandhi gandhi for he is the tool to improve life skills and his exploration continues in applying and this tool to various works of life especially conflict resolution and compassion he is a cinema student and left his bd schedule to attend the api film appreciation course at pune and did similar courses in australia He conducts film appreciation courses for students too. Welcome, Dr. Alok Basri. Welcome, Dr. Dinesh. Now, meeting is handed over to you. You are the chairperson. Please carry on for the proceedings. Uh, thank you, sir, and uh, welcome everybody. This topic for today goes into two lines: opportunities and barriers in the. supported employment for adults 
with intellectual and developmental disabilities but trust me the whole issue runs into many more layers because this whole issue is not just related to a, a clinical or a, or a rehab uh, center and neither is it is restricted to just the social part of it it's this if you read it carefully this probably brings all of us into the interface of our clinics and centers along with the society and the type of support and life which we can offer to people who have uh, who have grown up with their intellectual disabilities or other developmental issues so i'll not take much time i'll request dr dinesh to invite uh, dr harish and uh, once he finishes we'll have more discussion and okay question thank answer you. on that Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Anyway, let me thank Dr. Tufan Madhi for putting me into this session. Uh, we have divided our duty, one introduction of the topic by our own colleague, chairperson, and myself introducing the speaker of the day, Dr. Hari Shankatu from Bangalore. He is the current associate professor of psychiatry in Nimhans since 2018. He has done his MD 2010 from Christian Medical College, Vellu. From 2010 to 15, uh, he was in service under the state government of Andhra Pradesh. And 2015 till days, he is in the Psychiatric Rehabilitation Service, uh, National Institute of Medical Science, Bangalore. Is areas of interest, the disability due to mental disorders, psychiatric rehabilitations, adult with developmental disorders, quality inclusion of persons with disabling mental disorders, he is part of the PRS team, advocating and working for support, education, and supported employment, and also supported living. He is the apt person, I think, to deal with this topic today. So, without wasting time, I request Dr. Harish, please proceed with the topic. I invite him to start with the topic. Dr. Harish. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you uh, uh, for your warm welcome. Uh, and uh, okay. uh, I also wish to thank uh, uh, Odisha branch uh, for uh, considering my name for this topic and my unit chief, Dr. Jagdish Atir Thalli, for encouraging me to take up this uh, uh, discussion. So uh, in brief, I would also share about uh, uh, what I had learned over the last six years at psychiatric rehabilitation, which is quite different from what I had learned as part of my MD residency uh, uh, or even as part of uh, uh, when I did a state government service uh, where there was like 80, 90 OPD kind of thing. It's quite different uh, uh, and I learned a lot and I thought uh, uh, I would like to share. Uh, uh, so I, I assume that many of uh, uh, participants would have interest in this topic. That's why they would join. Uh, so uh, this I would consider this as a platform where I can start working with uh, uh, people who may also have an interest in this area for future. So uh, just I'll start uh, sharing my screen. Just a second, sir. Sir, are the slides visible, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. It's, uh, yeah. So I just uh, uh, will give you the overview of my presentation initially. Uh, I'll uh, use this opportunity uh, to also introduce our uh, PRS uh, services uh, overview briefly uh, uh, at Nimhans. And uh, I would uh, give some case vignettes which you might have seen in your clinical practice uh, and a brief overview of the supported employment concept and scope under Indian legislations. Yeah. What are the opportunities and barriers? Uh, what is the mental health professional's role, way forward, uh, and some take home points kind of thing. So uh, people who may not be familiar with NIMHANS, uh, uh, we have a, a psychiatric rehabilitation services separate uh, uh, unit under the Department of Psychiatry consisting of multidisciplinary team, uh, which runs both OP-based and IP-based rehabilitation services. 
it also has a daycare service center which caters to about 80 to 100 people who do avail this daycare services uh, regularly within the bangalore uh, urban uh, <clears throat> but covid has disrupted this uh, uh, availment of daycare services and we have switched into online mode which actually we are learning how to deliver online rehabilitation services uh, it kind of different area what we do is that uh, we plan for improving the functionality by optimizing medical uh, personal and environmental factors uh, of people who uh, usually would get referred or very rarely who would directly approach our services. Our unit is a referral unit which uh, uh, would be referred from other, other adult units uh, after uh, stabilization of their symptoms with which usually they would approach the units. And our team's goal would be to assist in satisfactory living with or without a paid job. Uh, uh, though many of the times the referral would be uh, uh, based specifically for some kind of uh, placing them or employment, uh, uh, our assessment and our support would be with the goal of to assist in a satisfactory living. So uh, this a few pictures to share with you uh, that this is our uh, building in psychiatric rehabilitation services, which has uh, a few sections like uh, computers and other things. Uh, sorry. One second. Yeah, so uh, crafts, uh, bakery sections, uh, uh, which serves bread for uh, entire Nimhans hospital and adjacent hospital where uh, patients get engagement as well as if they are interested, they would get uh, some kind of training. Uh, printing section, which offers some kind of uh, activities and training of photocopy if they're interested. A Roses Cafe is something which makes some kind of healthy snacks uh, uh, which are uh, offered to the staff and students. So people would join this uh, and there are weaving section crafts. So uh, an additional thing that might interest uh, some of you, uh, I would like to share one recent uh, uh, development by our team members is that a green skills project in association with the local NGO. Uh, our team runs this one, discarded flowers and dried powder. Uh, they are dried here and they are powdered and mixed with holy colors under supervision of the trained staff. Uh, NGO would offer the raw material supply on a constant basis and would look, look after the marketing of the products. The share of profits as incentive to the participants uh, uh, who are mostly their boys from the adjacent uh, state governments of shelter home for uh, uh, people with intellectual disability. And gradually this has been extended to the coloring and eco-friendly pen making. And uh, usually in holies, these will be marketed as a, a kits. Uh, our team members also had, I think, uh, had a good success uh, by selling this through the NGO. But over the last two years, again, the changes in the COVID, which led to uh, restrictions on uh, groups or uh, festival celebrations has impacted this severely. So this also has a connection to my later presentation where I would be discussing about how rapidly changing the job market or um, uh, uh, external market sometimes can pose unique challenges for any kind of uh, uh, vocational rehabilitation options that we do consider. So this is a picture of uh, that uh, uh, holy colors and eco pens and dias. Uh, uh, I would like to share a few case vignettes about challenges in the employment of uh, uh, persons with a disability, which I think I'm sure you might have experienced uh, like uh, uh, Mr. A is a 25-year-old gentleman, gentleman with a diagnosis of a mild intellectual disability with IQ of 64. After his passing 10th standard, parents tried to place him uh, in an office owned by relative for work assistance and learning. Mr. A had attended this office for one year duration, after which the relative asked Mr. A not to continue at the workplace. Uh, parents were informed about Mr. A's social oddities, uh, uh, challenging in, uh, interaction with the uh, uh, staff members need for constant support and frequent prompting at uh, workplace. So Mr. A could not fit in this open um, uh, employment even with some support. Another one is Mr. B is a 25 year old gentleman with mild uh, intellectual disability with uh, expressive speech difficulties and mood disorder. He could not adjust to several workplaces where he was placed uh, family members uh, uh, found some job like in a vegetable market, a shop assistant. Uh, allegedly, he was bullied at workplace and he was aggressive against his colleagues at times, which caused some, again, troubles at workplace. He was assisted in finding a contractual job as a floor cleaner. Uh, 
uh, which is uh, like uh, open competitive employment where he was getting a payment of around 14 to 15000 per month however accommodation offered to him at workplace it caused a significant uh, distress in other co-workers as they felt it was unreasonable uh, that uh, even though he was coming a little late one hour one and a half hour he was being accepted or some kind of uh, uh, unannounced announced leaves that he was taking this caused significant distress and the colleagues forced the supervisor to consider some action ultimately he was forced to resign and he is jobless now now another is uh, mr c is a 23 year old gentleman with a moderate intellectual disability iq 43 with expressive speech difficulties his ability to travel alone within the bangalore city is limited and his money handling skills are also poor his father owns a laundry and he interested in making mr c to uh, uh, join a computer entry related work or office boy kind of work his father feels that mr c can stay at home uh, assisting his mother rather than joining any kind of unskilled or laundry work which he wants so the father has a choice which uh, uh, for the past 4 years uh, uh, the son has been made to join courses like dtp ms office uh, uh, and our own prs computer sections where he gets engaged for some time but still father is unwilling to make any other choices Mr D is a 43 year old person with a mild uh, intellectual disability and expressive speech difficulty he does not have any family member and he resides uh, 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 in a shelter offered by an NGO considering his uh, contribution at the NGO a known associate of the NGO offered Mr D a job at another place now Mr D work involves sweeping uh, filling water serving tea etc uh, and uh, he is offered food at workplace and he is provided a, a, a amount of 4 to 5000 based on his attendance uh, as a wage now mr d is saving money to build a home of his choice he has no family members but uh, a question for introspection and discussion for us we can consider would mr d get a job if the employer is forced to pay that minimal wage that uh, law mandates like say 12000 or 13000 or uh, which varies according to the state uh, whether it's from 300 rupees to 390 rupees kind of thing now the last example in this uh, series is that mr d is a 23 year old gentleman with mild id with a selective mutism he did not receive any formal education with great difficulty and with assistance from social workers his father who is a daily wages worker found him a place to join in a go down thought he was though he was regular at his work his staring looks at one of his family sorry female colleague at workplace caused unrest in his employer he started giving blank calls to his female colleague uh, when he could not offer any explanation for his behavior he was labeled as a potential sex offender and he was terminated from the job uh, uh, i think many of us uh, 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 who uh, deal uh, uh, some kind of vocational rehabilitation aspects of uh, persons with uh, disabling mental health conditions whether uh, uh, with uh, severe mental illness or uh, intellectual and developmental disorders might have experienced one or two such similar situations uh, uh, so i'd also just give you overview of the employment in numbers uh, um, i think we all know that uh, uh, majority of uh, uh, jobs in indian are, are related to agricultural jobs and 30% are related to service sector and 30% are related to industry um, an indian study about two decades back i could not find much uh, uh, recent and elaborate studies in a recent context uh, reveals that overall uh, uh, there is only 0.4% workforce uh, uh, with uh, persons with disability and uh, among the pwd uh, the intellectual disability or mental health conditions are less than 1%. So out of 100 persons who are with disability or under employment, there is only one person who is with having a mental health condition, which indicates that a, se a serious uh, flaw is somewhere in the system about uh, inclusion. Uh, 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 now, there are only about uh, 23,000 employees with benchmark disabilities corresponding to less than 1% around 3.3 million jobs under the government of India. This is according to the DOPT publications in 2019. This is in spite of mandatory 3% reservations for persons with disability since 1995. So even after almost kind of 25 years, uh, uh, it appears that at least in, under the government of India, there are still uh, uh, significant backlog vacancies for the inclusion. Uh, um, and uh, uh, we can imagine uh, uh, the inclusion of uh, persons with intellectual disability or other persons with mental health conditions. One more challenge is that uh, uh, poor data. So, uh, 
Unfortunately, we don't have any robust system either at state or central level to track employment status of people in general or as well as for persons with a disability, including KDD. Uh, one thing that since 2017 that has been started by Government of India is that periodic labor force survey uh, uh, by National Statistical Organization, which, published, uh, uh, which publishes quarterly. Uh, it, it states that unemployment is around 6% in persons above 15 age. However, it states that the labor force participation rate is only around 38% in people aged about 15%. That means people who are ready to work and who are willing to work. So it does not consider uh, somebody who may not be willing to work. But one thing that may uh, uh, in future uh, can make a change in this uh, data collection is that government is considering LIN that is like uh, uh, labor identification number, like how do we have Aadhaar card, how do we have a unique disability ID, UDID, which has been launched recently by the Ministry of Social Justice. This LIN may uh, uh, lead to uh, changes in the way that uh, existing data capture system is happening in, uh, uh, in our country. So uh, I'll also just to give you a overview of the supported employment uh, uh, construct. Supported employment consists of paid work uh, for people with disabilities, where the pay is near or at a standard competitive wage. This support generally takes the form of a job coach who works with the employee with a disability, assisting and teaching him or her to do the job. Now, support is to enable the employee with a disability to work at a competitive rate with a reasonable quality of work. The support is provided for as long as the employee needs assistance to achieve satisfactory levels of quality and productivity. Now, what is the usefulness of the supported employment for persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Uh, PID employed under supported employment in comparison to sheltered workshops over a period of 15 months showed improvement in community participation, social skills, financial activities. Uh, I have not uh, uh, compiled uh, uh, much literature about this. I'm just giving some kind of uh, 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 snap uh, uh, for uh, giving support for supported employment. The, they were better able to use transport for community access, going to movies and to attend Sunday prayers. Persons uh, with intellectual and developmental disabilities in sheltered workshops are observed to earn less, even though they spend a lot of our at workplace in comparison to open employment with supports at workplace. However, the cost of supported employment initially would be high for the employers or to the state to provide supports, which uh, uh, was uh, seen with the uh, frowned eyebrows. Now, what are the costs involved in supported employment? Cost for arranging supported employment could be significantly higher than the disability pension itself. Uh, however, uh, disability pension is the only, if a disability pension is the only source for survival of the PID, and if the state has to bear it across the lifespan, amount would gradually increase, but it does not decrease. Training of a job coach and employing job coaches often require setting up a new system and high initial cost. Sheltered workshops often run at loss with more or less similar amount of funds from the state. So in long run, it has been clearly shown in several research studies that supported employment offers uh, significant advantages over the sheltered uh, workshops. Unfortunately, we, uh, uh, do not have well-established uh, supported workshops or uh, uh, sheltered workshops or supported employment uh, in Indian scenario, which I will be coming uh, covering in later slides. So uh, there are a few models of supported employments, uh, uh, among which one is uh, individual and the other three are group models. Uh, uh, individual supported employment model is reported to be more cost-effective and more integrating in nature, where uh, the person would be assisted in right from finding a job to continue a job through the job coach. Uh, each, usually each job coach will have a few number under his supervision where he would liaise with the constantly with the supervisor. He would attend the uh, uh, job place along with the uh, employee to understand the nature of the job and to uh, negotiate with the supervisors or colleagues to make some kind of necessary and appropriate modifications so that uh, in a short span of time or in a reasonable amount of time, the individual would uh, contribute to the firm uh, uh, as similar like as anybody else. How, of course, 
the uh, support and the accommodation should continue now three other group models are one is enclave model an enclave consists of a group of workers like eight or less with disabilities who are integrated as a unit into factory or other industrial setting it may be useful in resource limited settings where some kind of uh, philanthropic uh, some kind of employer who has say uh, 100 or 150 employees in his godown where he wants to uh, uh, hire some kind of a small group of employees who may have disabilities uh, along mixed with other non disabled uh, this might be useful or it has been useful however its uh, usefulness in integration uh, and uh, 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 changes that it would lead to in terms of a uh, uh, person with intellectual disability participation in society is uh, uh, less compared with individual model now other model is mobile work crew model uh, a group usually up to five employees under a supervisor would carry out a piece work moving across in a van so the supervisor who will be typically a person with a non disability uh, without any disability would find such kind of piece work uh, uh, suitable uh, to the skills of these people and uh, he would take them uh, to finish the work and they would return uh, another one is a small business or entrepreneurial model up to eight people who runs uh, such services Uh, this small business uh, by a group of uh, uh, pwd or pid is similar to a sheltered workshop but differs in ways with the more focus on quality and speed of work for financial gains and it is much smaller in size to uh, traditional uh, sheltered workshops now coming back to the scope for a support to employment under indian regulations or legislations now one thing that is uh, rights of persons with disabilities act 2016 uh, and perhaps the judicial interpretations of its sections uh, uh, which are happening right now as well as in future like of the broader wordings under this act can be a game changer which uh, uh, i believe example uh, there you uh, for some people who may be familiar about this one that there is a uh, uh, um, scope for uh, scribe for persons with disability for writing an exam whether it is competitive exam or whether it's a kind of 10th standard or plus 2 exam where Uh, a person can opt for a scribe uh, it, this was initially there now later uh, uh, government of india has changed this saying that only person with disability with upper locomotor impairment should avail this however uh, a person uh, in the recent past has filed uh, a case in the court that he has a writer scramp which is nothing but a focal hand dystonia and he should be allowed for a scribe now court uh, uh, has examined the rpwd act one thing that if you look carefully in the rpwd act there are two definitions which differ one is a person with disability one second one is a person with benchmark disability now person with disability is nothing but similar to uncrpd definition that any restriction in participation whether it is due to impairment whether it is environment whether it is any condition can be a person with disability now government has, sorry court has considered that person with disability definition and it has not even gone to what are the specified disabilities under the law uh, that uh, whether this focal hand dystonia is under the rpwd act or not so even if this focal hand dystonia is not under the rpwd act as a specified disability court has granted uh, using scribe for this person uh, uh, um, saying that this person is a person with disability now the spirit and wording of the rpwd act is for inclusion so even if there is a specified condition is not included there as long as a person is not able to participate because of the disability then he should be provided the all such kind of amenities now this has a larger implications which we are expecting that maybe when uh, some advocates which will uh, take this forward through pils or something uh, will lead to a lot of reforms in the existing practices now one more thing that would also a game changer can be is that the section 2y that is reasonable accommodation uh, uh, it clearly states that uh, it, the onus will be on the employer or the uh, uh, for modification that is reasonable and necessary and appropriate modification of the environment for exercise of rights of a pwd or pid on par with others as i said regarding the code verdict this also has a huge implications now in the same section 2h one more thing that has been explicitly mentioned in this act is that denial of reasonable accommodation amounts to discrimination now this discrimination is a penal offense under this act so i feel that these few things can 
uh, uh, be a game changer over the next few years. Now, persons with intellectual disability and developmental disability, uh, inclusive job reservations for uh, PIDD. So uh, 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 for people who may not be familiar, this RPWD Act Section 34, uh, uh, one uh, uh, states that every appropriate government shall appoint in every government establishment not less than 4% of total number of vacancies in the cadre strength in each group of posts meant to be filled with persons with benchmark disabilities of which 1% is for autism, intellectual disability, specific learning disability, mental illness, and multiple disabilities from amongst other conditions, which includes like hearing impairment, visual impairment. So all these three, five, sorry, five, autism, ID, specific learning disability, mental illness, and multiple disability uh, would be covered under this 1% mandatory quota for jobs under any government. So, as I said, the few sections as well as this uh, 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 reservation section uh, uh, provides a platform for bargaining and negotiating supported employment for PIDD on rights basis, at least in government sector, because the reservation scope is not there for the private sector, at least it gives a scope for the government sector. However, still challenges remain for entry into jobs even under the government sector and in private sector due to the existing method of selection of candidates, which includes persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Current procedure of post identification for persons with intellectual disabilities in contrast to job search for PID severely limits the usability of supported employment construct. I will give an overview of what is this post identification in a later slide. So <clears throat> following this RPWD Act 2016, which mandates that 1% reservations for, uh, uh, as I mentioned about the mental health conditions and multiple disabilities, every government establishment was forced to publish a notification saying that what are the posts that are available under that government organizations and among the posts, what posts can be held by persons with intellectual and developmental disability and as well as persons with mental illness disability also. So there was an incident in 2018 that Kendri Vijja Sangatan has uh, published a notification for about more than uh, around 70,000 odd jobs. So uh, those were under the both teaching and non-teaching. Uh, so when it has not included even one post for uh, persons with uh, intellectual developmental as well as even mental uh, disability, that is mental health, mental illness related disability, it has been raised by an advocate, uh, uh, disability advocate, uh, uh, kind of one of our junior colleague. When KVS Kendri Vijay Sangatan did not reply much, this was filed in front of the Chief Commissioner of Disabilities uh, in New Delhi. Now, Chief Commissioner of Disability has sought the KVS to explain how and why it is not adhering to the uh, rules laid down under the RPWD Act. Now, the Kendri Vijay Sangatan officially had replied saying that teaching and non teaching posts are not suitable for persons with intellectual developmental disabilities, persons with mental illness disabilities, persons with specific learning disabilities. So we still have those kind of copies. Now, one more thing is, uh, uh, I could not come across much, but the government of Kerala has notified uh, a list of jobs on 18 5, 2019 uh, uh, um, under the all jobs under the state government and it has earmarked certain jobs which can be held by persons with mental illness, earmarked certain jobs, which can be held by SLD, which can be held by persons with intellectual disability. For example, uh, it says that there is a binder job under this classification. Uh, it explicitly states that this binder job can be given for a person with uh, intellectual uh, IQ of 51 to 69. That is, it says that only a person with mild intellectual disability can apply for this job, no one else. That is moderate or these kind of things. Now, <clears throat> a person with autistic spectrum disorder also can apply. However, it states that mild to moderate severity can only apply. One more thing, that AIMS New Delhi notification dated on 14-3-2020 among about 98 posts. Uh, only one post, that is artist job, can be held by persons with intellectual disability. And about 32 out of the 98 jobs can be held by persons with ASD. So when you look at these uh, kind of uh, post-identification 
uh, I'm not going into the merits of how they did identification and I'm not going to debate about uh, uh, the kind of uh, how, uh, whether it is rightful or not. But uh, overall, I'm trying to conclude that several institutes within their capacity try to earmark certain jobs for that can be held by persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities based on their own understanding or the expert committee which they sought understanding about what a person with intellectual disability can do based on their experiential accounts. Now, there is no evidence anywhere to back any of these kind of things. Finally, Government of India, Ministry of Social Justice notified uh, in January 2021, a, a huge list of around two, sorry, 12, uh, 2000 page document that post suitable for PWD, including PIDD. So from now onwards, any government establishment wants to notify a job under its uh, 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 department has to look at this MOSG notification and see whether if the job that it is being advertised is similar to already, which has been published in this notification and then to follow uh, the same reservation pattern or uh, 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 disability to which it has been reserved. If you, if anybody has some kind of time to go through this document, there are some kind of, uh, 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 some funny, uh, uh, um, I would not go into that. Now, <clears throat> coming to the opportunities for PIDD in employment, uh, uh, severely limited in open employment due to the indirect discrimination. Now, Indirect discrimination, the best example that I had come across is that when you decide a height limit of 5.6 inch for entry into armed forces, uniformly irrespective of gender, it leads to almost exclusion of 90 to 95% of women because in general, women's height may not be 5.6 or above. Most of the women will be less than 5.6. So applying an uniform criteria though can be stated that it's a uniform criteria can lead to indirect discriminate a group of people from the purview of inclusion. Now, in this open employment, though it gives some kind of 1% reservation. Now, <clears throat> the selection, it would lead to indirect discrimination because the current selection system or recruitment for candidates in general and candidates with disabilities. If you look at either group B, group C or jobs, you will look that um, everyone has to have some kind of a plus two or say graduation or post-graduation qualification. Now we know that in our system, a person with intellectual and developmental disability, uh, it is, I would say, exceptionally exceptional to achieve some kind of such qualifications in our existing system. Though in Australia and uh, USA, there are now uh, uh, some uh, uh, new uh, um, courses for inclusion of intellectual disability people at university level, uh, which I would see that perhaps it would take some kind of two decades or three decades in our country. Uh, we, in the existing system of inclusion, I hardly see that uh, PIDD people can uh, cross uh, uh, 10th standard. Now, a person who would never acquire such educational qualification, which is necessary for employment, that would lead to indirect discrimination, even if the reservation is there. So, as I mentioned that even though that binder job under the Kerala government notification, now because the job qualification also requires the person to have a 10th standard, it is highly unlikely that a person with intellectual disability would pass through 10th standard. Uh, now, one more challenge that has come is avoidance of recruitment of class four or group D jobs. Uh, uh, over the last one decade, almost all government state or union governments or not recruiting any kind of group D jobs, which are usually with the eighth class standard qualification or 10th class standard qualification, they are outsourcing it to the private sector where private sector um, would not look into any kind of reservation. So even though this reservation for persons with intellectual disability appears on paper, beautiful, I would see that it would be of limited value or of almost no value for persons with intellectual disability in terms of inclusion in government sector given the current format. Now, are there not job opportunities for persons with intellectual disabilities? Uh, yes, there are. So uh, uh, one uh, uh, study which looked at uh, about more than 80 uh, uh, Indian companies in India, 
uh, found that more than 50% of the uh, uh, sorry uh, i'll come back to that now government of india published a document that uh, identifying about 127 occupations uh, uh, which may suit uh, uh, with the pidd with adequate supports uh, uh, so opportunities are plenty however the challenge is that the uh, opportunities are spread across places and requires a dedicated search in a designated area organized government sector announces notifications and therefore periodic examination of notifications for reservation quota implementation is necessary uh, organized private sector often willing to provide opportunities to pid based on recommendations by mental health professionals so as i said that uh, uh, recent uh, publication which looked into uh, companies which are offering some kind of inclusion of persons with disability not specifically intellectual disability found that Uh, some of the companies like MRF, Bajaj Auto, Escorts, Mahindra, Hero Honda Motors, Century Textiles, Glaxo India, Hindustan Lever, they are offering jobs to persons with uh, disability, and their workforce uh, is not that high. But overall, it appears to be somewhere around uh, cumulative 0.5 percent of the workforce. So, if you look at the government of India's workforce, which is one person, uh, I would be uh, uh, surprised that even 0.5 percent private companies are taking. so some of the occupations as i mentioned in the previously that uh, uh, government uh, has notified uh, that may be considered here are like agriculture animal husbandry automobile works bakery works bd manufacturing construction butchery carpentry catering fire processing domestic work fisheries forest operations honey gathering horticultural masala making packaging uh, though on paper this appears beautiful i had included only few but uh, uh, in reality finding a job and helping them to sustain job is Uh, uh, Herculean task. So uh, I would also share a few of my experiential learnings. Every person with the IDD would require a, a set of additional supports, which may be more frequent in nature, or more intense in nature, or more accommodation at workplace. Many people with IDD express their wish to work if asked, and would put effort to join work if opportunity is provided. Expecting the person to adjust to environment by learning or acquiring skills versus modifying the environment to suit deficits of pidd is a debatable issue with a thin borders usefulness of skill training at a center away from job limits the scope so existing skill training centers rarely suit to the needs of pid our experience suggests that pidd wants paid jobs similar to any other however the meaning and significance they attach to the work differs from many others it is the family caregiver and professionals who often disagree with their idea of vocational rehabilitation under the swat that is strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats analysis during initial interactions whatever choices pidd would express often would be happy to continue at any regular work that they can carry out if warmth and support is offered things that do matter for pidd is that importance in getting formally dressed formally attending workplace formally carrying out the work id tag of the employment and formal return from workplace recognition from the family friends and neighbors that he or she is attending a job warm verbal appreciation at workplace someone to support for any doubt someone to support proactively for workplace challenges earning some money of their own even if it is they do not have a much money concept having autonomy to choose and sense of contribution to family by work or by money is what actually matters more uh, that uh, in the over last 5 years Uh, has been a significant learning for me now what are the barriers for supported employment of pidd there are at various levels uh, systemic barriers we do not have a legislation or systems to address the complex needs associated with pidd participation in uh, wage work uh, we we'll, for example uh, uh, if we look at the labor laws and minimum wages law it does not uh, 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 differentiate between a person who partly contributes and hence partly can be paid if you look at us legislations there are different legislations for protection of wages for persons who work at a sheltered workshop so they would be paid part uh, uh, earnings uh, however it was again debated that it amounts to some kind of work exploitation uh, extraction of more work paying of less money but what i'm trying to say is that we do not have any net system in our system it is either all or none either in your complete employment or you are not in employment now if somebody uh, tries to give some kind of employment by giving say 3000 4000 now as i said that earlier uh, uh, it would be most of the times some kind of not with any documentation that he has been employed because it attracts 
labor laws where the employer even though the intention may be good to accommodate the people with lesser wages he would be penalized so we lack a range of work models under the labor department allowing part or partial contributions as i mentioned we lack state supported sheltered workshops we lack the human resources necessary to support the inclusion of pidd at skill training job entry and for continuation at job which i mentioned that for sub supported employment job coach is one of the crucial uh, uh, human resource to uh, uh, make uh, to make it happen in real life in practical we do not have such kind of human resources we lack the necessary courses even to develop such human resources to act as job coaches we already had discussed that educational qualifications how uh, minimum educational qualifications can act as a uh, uh, in sorry indirect Uh, barrier uh, <clears throat> now existing system of selection of candidates for a future job in which there is no concept of job matching so uh, uh, an interview or an kind of written test will be conducted for a future job where uh, the testing the interview or even sometimes uh, the uh, written test or general knowledge test or english aptitude test these kind of things may not have any relevance to what the person is expected to work later for example say a, a, a person who is Uh, appearing for some kind of uh, 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 railway wagon trolley pushing work for kind of track repairs he, even for that he is supposed to give some kind of objective entrance exam where he would has to pass through the general knowledge and all these things where his real work may not have any relation to what he is being tested so uh, existing system of selection of a person to job after fitness assessment rather than after a period of exposure at workplace for a performance we uh, all know that with the available uh, uh, models that have been successful across uh, various countries is that matching a job for person usually involves examination of the person in the real life job place for a period of time to see whether the person would fit into that place or not now that will happen only after a period of examination but existing system of selection does not allow that so you will get selected or not selected even before you even join a job now this system complicates the entry as i mentioned now pid versus persons with disability self advocacy and lobbying for protection of rights is least visible in persons with uh, 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 pid uh, uh, family centric system though offers uh, advantages in other areas it leads to poor life skills development in adults with pidd uh, existing system of job opportunities based on education qualification again i think it's a repetition sorry so no matter what amount of job reservations are created existing system does not allow pid to become eligible for pid job reservations now this is also i think briefly uh, touched that is attitudinal barriers cultural and social uh, societal attitudes related to uh, respecting people due to their job nature and designation rather than employed or unemployed and sometimes employer reluctance related to stereotypic beliefs about aggression misconceptions about id and mental illness poor understanding the difference between id and some kind of mental illness uh, and their need to provide more supervisory support apprehensions about contributions to the firm lack of available success stories to believe in a positive outcome family caregivers choice of employment over protective attitudes reluctance to risk taking and to expose to different work situations also are a significant barrier just a few examples for uh, i thought like there is a 28 year old person unemployed for the 3 years and who says that he is preparing for public service commission exams in contrast to a 20 year old person working for a 6000 per month for 3 years now there are certain cultures which value for the first person rather than the second person who feels that a person the first person deserves more respect in terms of uh, there are certain cultures a family prefers to engage in their adult son at home rather than considering a job which involves garbage segregations we had a number of our own experiential accounts in this regard a family which prefers to focus on regular income flow by investing money by lending or by leasing buildings rather than investing in hiring a support for logistics to reach a workplace so if a person can help the person to reach a job and to come back they would prefer to uh, uh, not to hire a support here because they do understand in a different way uh, sometimes we also see that gender related issues which pose a significant barriers a family who is very much apprehensive of their daughter with id going for any work one more significant barrier is environmental barrier logistics and support to reach the workplace and to return is one of the biggest hurdle that we have seen uh, though opportunities 
and are scattered across the community and these people do stay at different places matching the workplace with the person is the significant barrier in our understanding for the inclusion of persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities accompanying person to job place and bringing them back to home is one big barrier so a few uh, 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 thoughts which i had for a long time that perhaps can be considered for discussion that uh, mental health professionals current competencies in general for this particular task that is they do have a questionable expertise and skills about employment of people or persons with disability uh, for mental health professionals limited understanding of rapidly changing global and local job market the needs of the employer regulations regarding wage employment none of these things are taught as part of the mental health professionals course and curriculum when they get trained so many of these things has to be learned over a period of time and sometimes unless the person is working in that area for a longer time their uh, competencies or abilities would be limited sometimes the prejudiced beliefs about the potentials of pid the post identifications for pidd under the goi or government of uh, uh, kerala i have given an example there are some posts where they have been categorically said that they posts are not suitable for persons with intellectual disability which is not backed by any kind of evidence but it is a kind of expert opinion which i feel that it is kind of debatable and exclusion of any person based on the disability is exactly in opposite to the spirit of the law which says that exclusion should be based on case by case basis not on a disability basis so if we take that exactly then any person with disability whether it is intellectual or any disability cannot be a priori even before appearing for the job cannot be excluded which is happening right now now inadequate training of mental health professionals as well as psychiatric social workers and clinical psychologists during their course to work as a job coaches and national institutes and rci national institutes established under the ministry of social justice for the inclusion of pidd could not make much impact in inclusive employment for a range of reasons coordinated research and development of contemporary employment models for pidd is limping at various apex institutes rca established for the creation of trained human resources for the inclusion of pwd including pidd has miles to go before making any visible impact perhaps the way these are functioning uh, requires a revisit now what can make a difference one thing that uh, if you are not familiar perhaps uh, uh, like uh, under the bridging gaps rpwd act section 2000 uh, sorry rpwd act 2016 section 34 3h states that persons with intellectual disability and persons with other disabilities are eligible for unemployment allowance if they could not be placed in any wage employment after 2 years of their registration with any special employment exchange now the question is where is the special employment exchange how can we register many of the mental health professionals are many are not aware i, I honestly say that i never heard about the special employment exchange before joining our institute uh, as a rehabilitation team member now <clears throat> i know that there are 42 special employment exchanges across the 29 states in india and there are 997 employment exchanges so any person can be guided to approach the special employment exchange for registration which is uh, 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 the government of india and the local state government respectively either it's a ut or some kind of state so they will be given a kind of registration uh, by look by taking that uh, disability document uh, and uh, if they do have any kind of educational qualifications accordingly if do not have any educational qualifications they will be registered as illiterate category so any person there is no age limit any person who does not have any gene qualification can walk in with uh, necessary and relevant documents to this special employment exchange and can get registered and after 2 years of registration if he cannot be placed by the state for any government of job it is the district disability welfare officer's responsibility to provide unemployment allowance as a right so i feel that every mental health professional interested in vocational rehabilitation of pidd should liaise actively with such exchanges and audit and review of systems periodic labor for as i said the periodic labor force survey that is by government of india which releases a quarterly bulletin about the employment uh, does not capture the data on statistics of pwd leave alone pidd national trust established under the national trust act 1999 for the cause of inclusion of pidd 
when we have sought information under rta have said explicitly that nt national trust has no data on the number of pidd in india till now there is no national or even state level survey on the needs of pidd including employment needs national trust established under national trust as i said that they do not have a data and they do not have any kind of research active research on for that so what do we do uh, 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 under this uh, uh, we uh, i would like to share what we do at our uh, uh, psychiatric rehabilitation services at nimhans so um, uh, we usually assess uh, uh, the readiness for job in person and the felt need uh, understanding the complex and unique needs of that person and family caregivers needs creating an individualized rehabilitation plan with or without vocational rehabilitation options when we could accommodate a few pidd at our place uh, 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 for example uh, because this are a huge hospital where there are some kind of uh, uh, group d or some kind of manual jobs one thing that uh, our team members had tried is that we tried to accommodate to uh, um, uh, when we felt that there are right candidates to show some kind of success to others one other thing that has happened subsequently is that it led few others to hope for the same that they would be employed only at nimhans and they even refused to explore other options so um, it, it has also uh, has some kind of backfired in some extent no so we do encourage every pid who approaches us for registration with special employment exchange wherever and whenever possible placement would be considered if a pid expresses need for a job and if our team feels that he is job ready we do discuss engagement our day care till they get a job even on irregular basis if they do not have a job we encourage them to come to our uh, day care center so that they would improve their working habits that is attending uh, uh, some kind of form of engagement from 9 to 4 so they would start at 8 o'clock at their house and they would go back at 5 o'clock which would increase their work habits often we negotiate with employers to consider them as apprentices or to observe them at workplace for some time before discussion about inclusion or payment options we encourage the family to explore options on their own and to seek our support for any troubleshooting so what uh, perhaps you may consider uh, somebody who may be interested who may not have uh, worked in this field is that consider exploring liaising and establishing a network be familiar with the local ngos recognized under the government of india through darpan there is a national portal darpan portal government of india which you can go through that every non governmental organization is supposed to be registered under darpan portal under which sector it is working and in which place it is working so there is a <coughs> portal where you can search about the ngos which are working in your area so this actually has been helpful uh, because it's a government I, i am not advocating any ngo here one has to perhaps learn through their own experiences but this acts as a beginning uh, or through local acquaintances for exploring opportunities and to create a list of resources uh, resource persons for referral so you may get cases uh, where you would feel that kind of need so you should have a ready list of resources where you could refer you could talk to that person and you can follow up with the person after referring be familiar with local ngos or parent caregiver organizations through national trust website for the same now national trust website also offers this kind of organizations the difference between national trust list as well as the darpan list is darpan list any ngo in may whether they are dealing with pwd pidr but national trust website provides a list of ngos which are catering for only for pidd persons with intellectual developmental disabilities so this perhaps there are not many but this also would be a great resource for somebody who wants to look into uh, by using online platform where to start some kind of liaising and networking be familiar with local or nearby special employment exchanges for registration and encourage their registration be familiar with local employers who may be willing to consider inclusion of pidd explore the resources made available to public by scpwd there is another thing called a skill council for persons with disability under the uh, uh, empowerment of persons with disability uh, uh, it has a list of resources which actually is trying to develop and uh, recently published a list of resources for persons with intellectual disability so professionals who may be interested can go through these resources and arrange or liaise family caregiver group meetings who may have a common needs document and compile the progress made in each case for generating an evidence please share your uh, uh, 
or your client stories or journey at employment with others we all have a lot to learn over a period of time considering exploring exploring new developments like courses job coach for persons with intellectual disability as i said that uh, uh, there are no job coach courses to the best of our knowledge even the one or two may be running which i am not be aware uh, the second thing is recognition of this course is also one issue so and prs has liaised with a local uh, uh, ngo uh, to uh, start this course on a pilot basis which has run uh, uh, and uh, initially uh, six people who are nothing but family caregivers and turned some kind of professionals with some kind of uh, 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 rci recognition qualifications took up this course we also learned a lot but i feel that there is a need for this kind of courses across what i feel is that what can we do together uh, we are considering to start uh, similar such kind of certificate courses in being job coaches for persons with specifically for idd covid 19 caused a lot of disturbances and we are contemplating even online options for the same we would happy to interact with you to learn from your experiences for designing such courses based on your inputs and to launch this course to enroll and to train professionals in this field supported employment for pidd is a continuous process and we can make a difference in long run if we can work together there are few uh, underestimates which might have contributed to this that there is uh, nsso national statistical organization report 2018 states that there are only about 0.1% of intellectual disability people in india corresponding to only 12 lakhs across india this suggests that there could be around 1500 to 1600 pid in every district in india out of which 50% this may be in product to age group that means this data suggests that there may be somewhere around 700 to 800 people with intellectual disability who may be in employable age group and among them if you look at mild moderate severe and profound there may be few hundreds in each district scattered across the districts now this forms a specific group with usually who not have any voter count and segregated within the house or within the state shelters they that could have contributed for this so called uh, i won't call it as called but for what we are observing a significant exclusion of pidd in our country so few of the resources perhaps uh, people who may be interested uh, uh, i had limited myself only to the government of uh, india or state government of kind of thing but uh, uh, i would be happy to share any other private or some kind of ngo resources if people are interested to know more uh, uh, thank you for again giving this an opportunity for uh, uh, me to share my Uh, and our team's experiences, and uh, to um, uh, use this platform uh, to start some kind of uh, uh, broader networking with like-minded people. Thank you, Dr. Dinesh. Sir, you are muted. Muted, sir. Unmute, sir. thank you arish uh, for the nice presentation you have explained all about the uh, all about the pidd and also the barriers they are facing in the in, in india also and the type of all the government support also giving uh, giving that is 3% the government uh, jobs are employed but in the private sector even though you have Uh, delted a lot but uh, i don't know how how far the private agencies and the private sector and corporates level all giving employment this they all seems to be mostly uh, exploiting these people this is the, this is what my opinion not they are not giving the proper salary lay as you told 10 or 15000 uh, and and i know in tamil nadu government a lot of uh, private sector people are very eagerly uh, recruiting these fellows and the rehab center also they are sending these people yearly for work the pity thing is they are not uh, constant there they are working for a as we told with some problems or the when it uh, affects the production of the uh, factory or the this thing then comes then they have to leave within one year or something or with their behavior problems or some uh, incompetency uh, as they are uh, finding out they will be out from the factory also the, but this disabled people will change from year to year to the factory and they are getting benefited they are working a lot of time also from 7 to 
servant and other things not like uh, as we expected and the nobody is giving except the government that three percent they are giving okay they are giving because they are legally also secured in that aspect also government is rule is like that and uh, uh, now in india this pwd act on 2016 that is giving full support to this uh, disabled people also they are, they are very secure in their jobs and for all all sort of the life patterns also they are getting supported by this legal act also lord also now i request my uh, bajpai to contribute something regarding this speech i i think we'll open up for questions and then i'll okay okay sir then i'll come at it okay. alim and thank you yeah yes sir thank you sir thank you sir uh, thank you dr harish a very exhaustive presentation uh, at uh, uh, firstly there is a request the links that you showed in the last the, uh, i think the second last slide if you can share it with us uh, we'll share it on our facebook page or if you can post it in the uh, chat box people can directly put it up so so uh, boss let me shut the ball rolling uh, the society is functioning in a way that we want competitive uh, people we want uh, uh, the people who are doing best to come out there is not a very uh, well structured social security net and then we want to support people with disabilities so isn't this uh, uh, let me be the devil's advocate we are uh, uh, going in the general trend Up, uh, opposite of the society what is the usual flow of the society so so are we going in the opposite direction by doing this what is your take on this dr harish you are muted you have to unmute yes sorry sir uh, i partly agree as well as i partly disagree sir because Yeah. Uh, i feel that everyone whether uh, uh, even i do require some kind of support at employment to uh, perform my duties so if you take the supports as a kind of dimensional rather than all or none all of us perhaps would require some kind of some form of support to discharge our duties effectively only thing is that persons with intellectual and developmental disorders may require more frequently or uh, a different kind of more intense supports now that's why the concept of reasonable accommodation comes that if the employer thinks that the investment that is necessary for reasonable accommodation is within the limits and it will not cause undue burden and it causes contribution to the firm i would strongly advocate and encourage that now second thing is that for example the government which many times gives some kind of disability pension kind of thousands or these kind of things uh, where at least some amount can be also looked into developing such kind of supported employment systems because we all know that there is enough literature to say that a regular work maintains emotional well being even if a person has not any mental illness and it improves the mental well being if a person has mental illness if there is no regular work it itself can a contributor as well as a predisposing factor for mental uh, 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 health problem and also american companies have clearly shown that there is a business cost people where they have hired people with intellectual or developmental disorders or other disabilities there they have noticed that there are many benefits one is that their punctuality and attendance is much better than compared with others now people started getting more familiar with these people so direct interaction led to more reduction in stigma where people started understanding these people with disabilities so the stereotypic beliefs which they had about aggression these things had come down and companies also started lobbying themselves that they are disabled friendly disabled champions which gave them some kind of uh, uh, advertisement okay so it, it is a good pr policy also for the company absolutely amrit yeah sir wonderful presentation these are areas we need to learn but you know we are always in the dark we think these are not very important things i think these are one of the most important things you know when we look at treatment goals when we look at things this the socio economic functioning is one of the important goals it's not just the clinical you know improvement so thank you sir for your wonderful presentation 
Now, the most important thing when we talk about job, employment, special things is financial. It's a very, very important aspect. And uh, nowadays, the government is not, you know, the government jobs are at a premium. You know, gradually they're cutting down on permanent jobs. They're all picking up contractual jobs where they're giving somebody, you know, based on the qualification, 20,000, 30,000, the government is saving on, you know, salary, on pension and everything else, sir including you know drivers gardeners everything is now they are just hiring out people so that they can pick and choose so somewhere the reservation whatever they are giving to people with disability has reduced significantly and the categories are, are under which they can be employed is also very very less sir now, now the most important uh, sector is the private sector sir so that is the area that has to be tapped in terms of like what you are telling like a pr exercise but the most important thing might be financial incentives sir you know that is that is one area where people have to really work work on the financial incentives in terms of tax benefits in terms of you know the government aiding you're giving unemployment benefits if somebody has registered for two years why not use it to make things you know somebody who is employing like 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 a big it company like infosys employs 500 people or 1000 people in bangalore they get some benefits and the government also puts in some amount for x amount of money which somebody puts the government might put 20% of the money so somewhere the policy Tweaking is very, very important. Somewhere, so the private sector has to come in. So what are the things you are advising the government on this, sir? Like I want to keep in my hospital or in my clinic, what, what benefit do I get? Because somewhere there is a compromise. Let, let us be honest now. Now, like what Alim was speaking, in a very, very competitive world, we have to compromise a little and we are ready for the compromise. Uh, but, but what are the benefits which we might get? I'm being a little harsh the way I'm speaking, but that is what people might be thinking when they're looking at an employer. So, so what, what are the advices you will give to the government or maybe to us to talk to our people here? You know, I, I agree with a lot of uh, comments that you have made. Uh, I think uh, government of India also has already a policy that if a person with disability is employed in the private sector for the initial uh, two years, uh, the PF contribution of the employer would be paid by the government, not by the employer. Only later, uh, uh, so it gives a levy for the private employer. So as a kind of encouragement for the private employer. But uh, sometimes uh, I would feel that it has not been sufficient to change any kind of dynamics. But uh, recently, I think uh, uh, World Health Organization has published a document which we are reviewing and perhaps has a lot to learn for uh, uh, policy changes is that uh, several governments uh, across the globe are implementing uh, policy changes for inclusion in the private sector. So one other thing that we had come across that is interesting is that, so if a private firm uh, company has hired with persons with disabilities, then it would be given preference in terms of contracts that government would allot. So uh, that would, I think, would uh, uh, lure the private firms to consider employing. Uh, and there are many tax countries, unfortunately, do not have any such. I think we can learn from many other systems, and definitely there is a lot way, long way to go. Uh, and priority also has to be on the private sector. Uh, and unfortunately, we do also have a, a lot of uh, unorganized sector jobs which will not be uh, falling under anything, and that would also be an issue. Most importantly, I feel that lack of models which are legally allowed is one significant limitation. Yeah, uh, and I don't feel that compromising will lead to any kind of uh, uh, improvements. So uh, there should not be any compromise. It should be based on the fitness to the job. Uh, unless the person is fit for the job, he need not be employed. No need. Okay. Uh, sir, let me again ask the same question. I'm this question in a different way. Suppose I have my social circle, circle of friends. I recommend a person that this is a person with a uh, certain disability. Now you please employ him. So he asked me, why should I employ him? It is uh, going to create problems for me or some sort of, so how do I convince the person who is employing it? It ultimately depends on how much charity is, he is doing. So if he is not charitable enough, uh, or uh, in addition to that, are there any data, anything that I can say to my friends to employ the persons with disability? 
sir our understanding or our learning is that these datas will not convince any employer only it is experiential accounts which will make them to change their perspectives so usually what we would try is that we would advocate or we would negotiate with the uh, potential employer saying that why don't you consider observing this person in your firm for a period of time so it can be a simply uh, some kind of apprenticeship why you you just pay the transport costs let him contribute to your place and you observe when you are satisfied you take him so that would lead to some kind of uh, uh, change in the way that others would look at the situation second thing is they even sometimes they may feel that some kind of charity that they are doing which may uh, uh, revive uh, uh, make a decision to include but over a period of time when people start performing reasonably well at the workplace with the uh, uh, limitations we have seen a significant changes in the employer attitudes where they would ask do you have anybody else who you would like to refer uh, sir uh, we had uh, i had an idea suppose a person who is employing so, uh, now on a forum we we uh, uh, invite them we give them a, a memento we offer them some respect so is it possible that a institute uh, a national institute or a national society uh, goes about it in this way that the persons who are actually employing the uh, Uh, persons with disability the employers they are uh, showed some respect or something so so uh, is it worth considering absolutely sir it would be very encouraging for people that their contributions are their inputs are being uh, 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 honored second thing is they may have a success story to tell to others who may change their perspectives as a professional i would advocate for my patient is different from an employer who hires a person with disability who would vouch for persons with disability i would strongly uh, consider uh, uh, to uh, take up such initiatives and honoring that any person who hires persons with uh, intellectual or developmental disabilities on a public platform and to share their views so that it will go a long way amrit yeah so we'll take some questions and then we'll talk about the So they want. So I will take a question from the very and the alphabetical order. Actually, is chronic case of OCD elig chronic and a severe case of OCD eligible for getting opportunity for reservation on the basis of disability? So how disability percentage is scored for OCD? I I don't think so. We have any disability for OCD, sir? No, no. Uh, 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 though uh, one thing that I would suggest is perhaps we would uh, uh, limit ourselves to the topic of discussion. so that otherwise uh, there will be uh, several distractions okay. but to just add on to that what i would say is that yes any person with any mental illness under the icd classificatory system can get a disability certificate provided he is certified with a medical board even people who have uh, uh, substance use conditions have been certified at nimhans so it's a kind of a debatable issue i'm not going into there but any person with any mental health condition if the medical board feels that he is disabled due to the condition whether it is ocd or whether it is agoraphobia whatever it is if they sanction a certificate of disability yes they would be eligible for all disability benefits okay okay uh i let me uh many questions in the chat box so the disability benefit of ideas more than 40% are not available by deserving population mainly because of barriers like bribes and red tapism so, uh, so how to avoid such uh, barriers is there any way that we can think of asking me politically <laughs> it's a question in the chat box perhaps we can take up questions related to the content of presentation sir yeah. sir are there any schemes by government or ngos or on ppp mode for rehabilitation or vocational training of persons with serious mental illness sir uh, sorry can you ask again sir a uh, senior psychiatrist dr roop sir has asked the question are there any schemes by government for ngos or on ppp mode For rehabilitation or vocational training of persons with serious mental illness. Sir. Serious mental illness. Uh, one of the uh, no, no. no. Uh, sir, Alim, Alim. 
Can you, can you invite Dr. Murli if he's around for his comment? Murli says yes, sir. I'm sir, unmute. please unmute, sir. Sure, sir. Please invite Murli, sir, for some comments. Yes, sir, you have to unmute yourself, Murli, sir. Uh, sir, you have to unmute yourself. I say I have unmuted. Uh, I have a few uh, comments to make. I really appreciate uh, Dr. Harish's presentation in terms of uh, and exhaustive coverage of the whole issue. But something very, uh, three issues which I would like to mention. One is that if we are going to look at uh, sustainable development goals established by the WHO, now uh, WHO is talking in terms of Rehabilitation 2030 Action Plan. And in this, it has to come under the health systems, not with the welfare ministry. So if we, are going to get into that system by 2030, it is going to be totally a different cup of tea altogether. The next one is that WHO also is talking about not the assessment of disability. They're talking about international classification of functioning, a single instrument which could be used across all disabilities. So this type of policy changes are likely to happen over a period of time because already WHO started training uh, people on developing resources and issues like that. And it need not be uh, medical doctors or psychologists or social workers or anybody else because all the countries are having low resources. Secondly, the job identification, which uh, I have been hearing from the time I was in uh, uh, the rehab center, demands. This is something which is actually, if you ask me, it's ridiculous. And uh, whatever jobs I identified are not existing also some of them. Uh, most of them are at the level of class four and things like that. It's not there. Now, if you look at ICF, International Classification of Functioning, you do not get into disease pro provisions. If you look at the disability categorization in India, under the PWD Act, you will see some places it is disease, some places it is disability. See, for example, uh, autism, uh, then leprosy cured. See, these are some of the disease uh, perspective. But if you look at uh, a functioning alone, then you can use a scale across all disabilities. Is the person able to walk? Is the person able to understand? Is the person able to carry out day-to-day -day activities? That is one. The other issue which comes is that instead of identifying a job, it should be the skill based. Now, all of us know that people with chronic schizophrenia or serious mental disorder who are on regular treatment are our own colleagues in some of the medical colleges teaching properly the classes. And we do not also look at the issue of people with paranoid schizophrenia who are well preserved they can be teachers and things like that. So this particular list of jobs itself is discriminatory. It's not indirectly discriminatory. I would like to say it's discriminatory. It should not be there. So because of that, people may not get any benefit. Now, Government of India has got a very interesting scheme for funding. This is called the Deen Dayal uh, Disability uh, uh, Fund. There are only two, in my knowledge, there are only two agencies which have got it. One is uh, in Assam, which a lot of people know the uh, center, and the other one is in Ta uh, Tamil Nadu. Now, we have to apply for this and apply in the, uh, through the proper uh, channel so that you can get it for serious mental disorders. Now, when you say 1% reservation has been increased from 3% to 4%, and in this 1%, the unfortunate thing is that specific learning disability is included in the category as along with serious mental disorder. Now, what will happen is that if I'm an employer who is going to interview, I have not been asked that I have to take this many number of people with serious mental disorder, mental illness, or with uh, intellectual disability. I may try to take somebody who is having a, a learning disability, somebody is having a dyslexia rather than taking anybody else. They are as normal as anybody else. So these are the lobbies which have uh, influenced the whole thing. And for the seriously mentally ill people, there are no lobbies. They cannot talk about for themselves. And who are the people who are talking for them? The professionals, not even family members. 
because the elderly parents uh, they do not know where to go and what to do with that the, so that is why what i feel is that uh, there is a lot of things we have to do as a uh, group and even though who talks about 2030 the way things are going even in 3000 ad we will not reach anywhere other than we will sit and discuss uh, in all this fora about what is to be done what could be done and how to change it so with that i would like to stop yeah, uh, so that was a very uh, <laughs> you can know, as i can say scathing of the <laughs> That's a real statement of reality. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, there is a question in the chat box. Is there any uh, list or any website that includes the companies that are willing to recruit or hire PWDs? Is there uh, any resource for that? Not that I am aware, sir. So only I found through some uh, publication studies which looked at. Uh, which have actually corresponded with companies and they published that based on the data on companies which have responded so uh, the data is also kind of uh, limited data uh, but i think many of the now persons with disabilities themselves are trying to create blogs based on their experiences their knowledge to share and uh, uh, yes there are some people who are sharing uh, their so uh, we may have to search i cannot i could not come across any kind of authentic uh, site or blog which will give anyway many times the companies also will take such uh, decision based on case by case basis again rather than based on a disability or there are some companies which are willing to take some kind of persons with autism like for example uh, 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 i forgot the software company which uh, takes about persons with autism because they have some kind of specific connection to that so there are some but uh, i do not have any kind of specific data right now readily available to share with you alim can i butt in i yes, have sir. to leave in 5 minutes can i just give my Your comment sir please sir please sir please sir thank you sorry for this indecency but i have to leave in 5 minutes so anyway i should thank dr murli for the reality check he gave he was my teacher and a colleague and a friend so he always does this let me extend to what he was saying the talk was very informative very knowledgeable very comprehensive and hopeful i should say this but let me also tell you that this was one lens from which we were looking at it because the i don't want to dampen the spirit but what is happening on the ground is entirely different the government is making plans institutes like nimans and other institutes are able to have rehabilitation center provide some systematic uh, help to these people yeah at some level intellectual disability may get 2% marks in du to get admission and all that but when you, for a average psychiatrist who is practicing in any of the a grade or b grade or c grade towns to actually rehabilitate and put people with disability into jobs it becomes really very difficult so we have to also as a psychiatrist look at the other side of life we what alim said at the beginning and what dr murli and harish also mentioned is we have become a society of gain everybody who gets up has to gain either you are a student or you employment and so when the focus is on gain people who have disabilities they find it very difficult to fit in especially in the totally urban centric life where the rush and speed is more but what was happening in india what was happening in india say 30 years back 40 years back on when gandhi was there in those 30 years people with intellectual disabilities in rural settings were more well integrated in the villages than cities and they would work also even if they got 20 rupees or 30 rupees but the respect of labor the dignity of labor in fact we lack dignity of labor in this country right from top to bottom and we have still not been able to induce it imagine a person who has a disability where does the dignity of labor lie and i'm i'm sure we are we can't go back to villages i'm sure but uh, we can adopt something from them now i'm sure all of you do this 
i also do this in my practice when i have to rehabilitate somebody to a job to a small towns kasbas or villages i know there are where are the rehabilitation centers we are looking at government but there are none ngos work for other things but the rehabilitation centers are really less in a city like kanpur if you come which is a population of 50 lakh plus 50 lakh in kanpur rural you will not find a single center there is a government center which doesn't work you go to all towns you will find this so what is happening are we rehabilitating them that you should become okay and whatever you are doing at home even that is fine but then give full respect to the person so what i do i go and tell people ki why you please find out your friends somebody's factory somebody's carpentry shop where you employ them these people are able to give much more dignity to that person in their small way rather than the way the jobs are being hunted and i think it requires a major shift in society's attitude and give validity to these people and go back to what gandhi used to say i'm not, i'm not saying because i teach gandhi but gandhi used to give work according to ability and give money according to work so if somebody has everybody speak everybody who knows physics cannot be albert einstein everybody who bats on cricket ground cannot be sachin tendulkar but everybody can touch their peak why can't we as a society think and why have we not able to convince them that even a person with disability has its own point of self actualization at whatever level they are operating once we are we should do work towards this apart from whatever other work which institutes and government and everybody is doing because once that is done the misery will go down people with disability will have more confidence on themselves and whatever they do they'll do it well because people with learning disability are not disabled actually but see the misery they suffer by the time a kid comes to us in class 6 7 8 he is already down with his uh, totally internalized stress or, or externalized so i think we should also focus on uh, this issue uh, so I, we all have to come together whether we are interested in intellectual disability as for rehabilitation or not but to give them dignity this is our prime job and we have to really motivate people to get on to use their local resources the creativity to engage the person and there's enough work in this world thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir. <coughs> thank you thank you very much well said uh, sir can we invite dr shashi ma'am uh, he she is actually working in this field also so if if he uh, i take leave alim sorry for this okay sure sir please. okay okay dr pati bye thank you thank you your your, your comments are very well taken good night sir good night uh sashira ma'am uh, any any words from you uh, your experience yeah because i am working with rehabilitation and uh, i have seen that in the government sector it is very difficult but in the private sector comparatively it is little easier i mean that is because of our personal influence and uh, relationship that uh, we request people to give job to our uh, clients who are staying at a rehabilitation center and i really find that they do work very well in fact at our own center like our computer operator she is our patient but she is so good she is so apt at the work but the stigma related to our patients is very bad because she goes to give interview she qualifies but as soon as she gives the address of our place like because she is staying here at our uh, halfway home center that they you know re- reduce her uh, salary and things like that immediately they come down where where she is very good at working similar so these people can work very well but the problem is we have to adjust as i said in the chat box to their little behavioral issues we have to be a little more flexible and a little word of appreciation can do a lot but sometimes like because of the women and fancy so employers are not ready to you know to cater to that so uh, as dr alim you have said in the beginning that uh, we should call people and uh, who are helping and give them mementos so rather if we uh, call people and invite them and you know uh, tune them to the needs of our patients and what they can do then definitely some people can come out to help them and i think we should uh, take this initiative to uh, you know uh, invite the private sector people to our centers motivate them to give uh, job to our patients so that and having a job earning something really adds to the dignity and to their well being also thank you so much ma'am
Uh, Amrish, should we hand over to the chairperson? Yes, yes, yes. Dinesh, sir, your closing. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, we had a very nice presentation, and uh, I like the presentation very much because of yes, uh, uh, giving a very clear cut picture about the uh, people around, uh, people around, and the job sources, and also uh, their their safety and the legal uh, assistance they are getting. But frankly speaking, as Murali told, we have to look into the reality. That's the main thing. Whatever we do, there are certain limitations. As Madam told, people in the private sector, some people are interested, some people are uh, taking this as a charity ways also to helping a disabled people. They are app appointing. They are also, as Murali told, see, the, 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 with the mild disability only will be appreciated. In the, in the case of the job seeking people. So that is also a fact. If more disability is there, nobody will, I, I don't think it will be fruitful for the uh, people who are employing him also. Because they have to, he'll be creating a lot of problems there also. We are seeing it. And that's why I told this is not stable. After two months or three months, he'll be discarded from that place. Because if it is a limited uh, work and limited this thing, no problem. He cannot do much work also. So, I think with these weights, uh, anyway, the presentation was good and the discussions and also everybody pointed out with good points. Murali also gave the good contribution. I think we can stop the topics for discussion today for this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Tufan, sir. Yes, thank you very much. This topic was very interesting and I would like to have my inputs today. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Harish and Dr. Murdi are there also. So my first observation is that rehabilitation is not equal to getting employment. Rehabilitation can be achieved otherwise by potentiating the person to his fullest ability as it was been noted by uh, Dr. Baspe. Rehabilitation cannot be equated to getting a job. Because people otherwise capable are also not getting job without any disability. Number two, when you are going to ask an employer to employ a person with intellectual and developmental disability, there are other persons also who are asking for other disabilities. <clears throat> and last but not the least, as pointed out by Amrit in the beginning, it is true, any private sector has to do it from source, a budget given as the uh, charity or a budget where he can uh, earn something, get some profit. Without that financial adjustment, it cannot be done. Third thing I want to point out that instead of uh, our singing the success stories, we must build our plan on the failure stories and understanding what are the limitations. I believe the, most of the mental health services to the community are being given by private psychiatrists. All persons in job one day become private psychiatrists. And when you walk as in one individual, it is only personal appreciation of the problem of that person to whom you want to rehabilitate or give a job and your own contact that are. And there, there are many other factors. The support for the person, the person is maintained because of family support and job, he gets to that distant place. He may not go to there. There are many practical problems that has to be appreciated. And first of all, the need for this has also to be taught in our curriculum so that psychiatrists, psychiatrists when they come up, then come with this knowledge. And this is also essential. It must be a part how to do this. This awareness program that Dr. Hari uh, says that everybody should know that this has to be done in this way. And our planning should take into consideration the reason of the failures, where any individual has tried and it has failed. That has to be taken into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the IPS Odisha State Bank, I'll give you a formal thank you. So first of all, I got a wonderful comment in the chat box. A unglamorous topic, but a very, very important topic. And we had more than 240, 250 people who attended it at a peak of 192. It's very, very good. Thank you, Harish, sir, for the brilliant presentation. 
you made us understand a lot of nuances and coming from somebody who has really worked it, it, it was an eye opener for many of us thank you to our chairpersons dr dinesh sir and dr bajpai they 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 were brilliant murli sir as always he shines always and and, and he spreads knowledge his own practical experience as a teacher somebody who has worked so thank you sir thank you shashi madam like like taking over from what dr tufan sir told i have two patients who have been kept in a hospital we have given them job for one family we rehabilitated the father also because we wanted the son to work who is a chronic schizophrenia patient we also gave the father a job as a you know accounts manager and some salary to the son so what we did actually is 30000 salary was made into 25 for the father and 5000 salary was made 10000 for the son and we rehabilitated both of them and another person who was working somewhere was getting frequent relapses because he was not able to sleep he was a pharmacist was made to wake work long hours we accommodated him in our medical college i made it strict that he'll work only from 9 to 5 and for the last 4 years is doing well so we have rehabilitated two people in a private medical college and both of them are actually doing very very good people don't know their my patients unless they come for follow ups maybe once in two months three months and i tell them don't come for follow up people understand there's no issue sir you have saved us will come so so there is some way there is some you know we can all try in our own sweet way two persons three persons that that can also make a difference and that gives an example to others to maybe employ people with, with a specific skill set uh, thank you all of you thank you ips odisha branch thank you torrent thank you for our viewers hopefully next week we'll come with something different a new topic we always think to stimulate our audience get new topics get new people get the best and i hope you have been you know seen a good good one today. thank you everybody good night good night doctor <coughs> good night murli it was nice thank you, you. Thank you.